The following is an ESG 360 video. Well, Doug, it's 2018 and everyone's done their predictions, write-ups. You've done some, I've done some. And so let's talk about some ESG predictions for cybersecurity in 2018. And the first one I want to talk about, I've labeled cloud computing chaos. It should have theme music. Yeah. And it's an area that you really cover. And I just think there's a lot of activity. There'll be a lot of security issues. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when it comes to the cloud, you know, while organizations are taking you know, advantage of the agility of the cloud, adversaries take advantage of the cloud as well. And last year, one of the things we saw in, in terms of cloud computing was data loss from misconfigured S3 buckets. So I suspect that's going to continue this year. There's, there's a lot of confusion around the APIs and sort of the access controls that configure those buckets. So there's some technologies coming out to help organizations understand when they do have misconfigured S3 buckets. Also, we're seeing the use of cloud apps for store and forward campaigns. So hey, if I can insert a piece of malware into an enterprise file sync and share service, I get a one-to-many opportunity to propagate that threat. So, so it's a good threat vector. Especially for the, the new and unknown, and I know you've been thinking and talking about advanced threats that are, that are zero days as well. Yeah, and uh, it's early January, and we've already seen some major, major vulnerabilities, yeah. like the things that are going on with the Intel CPU. No kidding. We've seen some things with uh, the Dell EMC support um, software. Right. We've seen some things with Western Digital uh, consumer uh, storage drives. And uh, we're in a period where we're writing a lot of software, and unfortunately, a lot of it's not very good software. Or yeah. uh, these kinds of vulnerabilities will happen. So I think the whole uh, notion of vulnerability scanning, patch management, configuration, scanning and configuration changes, that whole component of risk management is really something that it's incumbent upon organizations to do a good job on because they're going to be uh, adding all this new software and a lot of that software is buggy. A lot of the open source software yeah, is buggy. There's a lot of it out there. Yeah. So those are all you know, sort of established, somewhat tried and true cybersecurity technologies that aren't always properly implemented, to your point. Mm -hmm. But what's, what's new on the horizon? What are some sort of newer, more advanced technologies that are maybe a little more sophisticated, a little more adept at detecting these new and unknown vulnerabilities and threats? Well, so I've written a lot about uh, something I'm calling advanced prevention. So we've, we've always had prevention controls. We have firewalls that block certain network mm -hmm. communications. We have AV that blocks files and things. But what we have, uh, what we've seen over the last few years is a lot more of these kinds of technologies. So micro segmentation, for example. The ability to easily or more easily segment your network into uh, much, smaller, uh, much smaller networks Therefore, uh, decreasing the attack surface. It's sort of a least privileged model applied to network infrastructure. Absolutely, infrastructure. yeah. yeah. Um, we see uh, machine learning. So machine learning on, on uh, endpoints, doing a better job of threat detection and prevention. Machine learning to pick up anomalies. We see the software-defined perimeter, once again, restricting that, uh, that communications path between user and device and application, not even network. So I'm looking for a lot more of that. I, I mean, we, we, we're doing things for detection, um, but detection's tougher. Detection means analyzing things. And so if we can do more on the top of it, uh, uh, just to prevent things from happening, I think that's the way we'll go. Prevent first, reduce attack surface area, no things are going to get through, then you have to detect and respond afterwards. And then you can focus your detection and response, and yeah. that's, uh, that's easier to do then. Sure. So, you know, the buyer in 2018 is still going to be barraged with a bunch of buzzwords and technologies and product offerings. And there's a lot of, you think? <laughs> there's a lot of goodness in there. Um, what happens from your perspective in the industry moving forward here? Do we finally start to see some consolidation? Is, do, we, do we start to rationalize product sets, product categories? Um, to some extent. I mean, we'll certainly see, or we should see a lot of M&A activity because yeah. you've got some very big companies. They've got the stock market's good. They've got a lot of resources, so they should fill in some holes. But I think what we'll see a lot of is commercial SOPA offerings. This is kind of an end-to-end -end architecture, but instead of me putting it together myself, I'm going to buy a proprietary version from a vendor. And that may not be comfortable because security people have traditionally chosen best of breed, but there's some value to that. So I think at the very least, large companies are going to explore those options. Yeah. I mean, a lot of vendors are talking about 
platforms. I think it sort of begs the definition of what actually a platform is. Yes. And one of the things I always look for in a platform in cybersecurity or in prior IT segments I worked in is, is it open? So, yeah. hey, I want to consolidate disparate components into, into a platform because I get I get synergies there and leverage and operational efficiency. But mm -hmm. do I still have flexibility to choose best of breed and I can snap that in? And it's, we've been a little short on standards in cybersecurity. Yeah. Sort of in SIM we had, you know, things like SEP and LEAF to be able to propagate alerts into a SIM. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully as part, you know, as we see things like SOAP architectures get standardized that we have, more things like open DXL as, as an example that can be standards based and allows companies to sort of snap in their best of breed and they get the best of both worlds. Yeah, and you see some of that. Um, I think that the way that has to happen is that the, um, the large vendors kind of push the agenda and the market follows. I don't think all the vendors will get together and uh, as much as I'd like to see it and collaborate on some open standards. Yeah. But I think y you see this with um, companies like McAfee with OpenDXL, you see it with um, Splunk, just kind of centers of gravity for that. You bet. What else is on your radar? What's sort of top of mind for you this year? Well, I, I mean, it's, it's clear that there aren't enough cybersecurity professionals to go around. So we, we've been looking at um, the transition from do-it-yourself to services. And so we think that managed services will grow quite a bit. I mean, I just wrote a blog about endpoint managed services. And endpoint used to be the one thing that you would do yourself because it was kind of a turnkey product and you'd hand it off to IT ops. No longer. It's very complex. It's a defense in depth architecture. So I think you'll see CISOs with a, a portfolio mindset of what can I do myself? Mm -hmm. What do I need help on? And where is there sort of a hybrid where I just need staff augmentation? Sure. How about you? What's, uh, what's cooking in Doug world? Yeah. So on my mind is this notion that um, so many companies now are software companies. Even if you're not really an independent software vendor, you're, you're often running your own code and code is becoming infrastructure mm -hmm. and the way code is managed is different now. So we talk about the DevOps, DevOps culture of getting the dev team and the ops team together and the continuous integration and continuous delivery methodology. That's really the backbone of DevOps. I want to see security integrated into that. Um, pipeline more. And the more we can integrate security processes and technologies in the dev environment, writing better code to your point earlier, in the test environment, so you're ringing out vulnerabilities, software vulnerabilities and configuration vulnerabilities, and then in production you're doing auditing and monitoring, everybody's going to be able to increase, you know, improve their security posture by baking in security. So there's been a little bit of snarkiness in the market around the term of DevSecOps. I appreciate that, but I, I think it's a rallying cry to really, mm -hmm. you know, bring security closer into the development process and then the delivery and production process. So do you think that that's happening or do you, do you want that to happen? Well, our research, both. well, both. Mm -hmm. um, but our research tells us that it is starting to happen. And we did a study this, this last year on, on, on hybrid cloud security. We asked about DevOps and DevSecOps and we have 40% of the respondents said they are looking at the security use cases behind DevOps. Hmm. It's encouraging. Well, let's hope that happens in 2018 and we'll be here to predict things as they happen. Absolutely. Well, Happy New Year, John. Happy New Year.